Hi, this is Ira Gorlick, and welcome to the lecture on the history of telecommunications. First of all, let me define what telecommunications is. Telecommunications is mediated communication. And when I say mediated communication, I'm saying any communication that has a technology between the sender and receiver. Mediated communication is to be distinguished from non-mediated communication, which we know as face-to-face -face communication. Um, and, and this is what creates many of the uh, regulatory and government issues in terms of managing telecommunications is now you have something in between the sender and receiver and the question of course is who controls that something. Let me just quickly in this lecture give you a brief history of telecommunications. Um, I divide information, I divide telecommunications into four information ages. The first information age I call cave painting. Um, Cave painting allowed for communication over time, which is important. I'm looking at this picture here, and that was painted thousands and thousands of years ago, and we're still looking at it today. So it was very good at communicating over time, um, but it wasn't mobile, clearly. Um, you had to go to the cave to actually see the communication. And it's very low bandwidth. Um, how much information can you put into a, a cave painting? Very little. Um, and it's not duplicatable. Each cave painting is unique, and uh, you can't duplicate it because each cave wall would be different, each lighting would be different. Um, it is not duplicatable. And of course, there are limited publishers. Um, this is critical in the terms of when we get to the fourth information age today, uh, where you have a lot of publishers. Back then, you had very few publishers. And I don't know who controlled what was painted and why it was painted, so I'm, I'm just going to leave that as, as unknown for control. This become, control becomes more important as we move forward. So the second information age is writing on paper or parchment. Again, you can communicate over time. And unlike cave paintings, now you have something that was mobile. You have information that was mobile. You can pass it around. It was still limited to, or is limited to, the speed of a horse or a man, so it, it, it couldn't be very mobile. <clears throat> but if you wrote something and you handed a letter to somebody, you can get it um, over a distance. It was still fairly low bandwidth. It was obviously a lot more bandwidth than cave paintings, which if you look at being mobile and having more bandwidth is why writing became such a, you know, an innovation. It was just tremendous. You now could, could uh, write, you know, long bits of information and you can move it around. Um, and unlike cave paintings now, um, you had a lot more publishers. But it was still fairly limited, especially in the early days, as to, in terms of who actually knew how to write. There were very few people who knew how to write. Um, now, writing was more duplicatable. If you look at the Torah, for example, the Jewish first five books, um, that's what you read today in the synagogues and temples is exact copies of the original Torahs. So it was duplicatable, but it was somebody had to physically copy it. And the, the, this, this information age and the second information age, um, the writing was under total control of the church or government. The third information age is the printing press, and this was a huge step forward. Again, you could communicate over time. Um, you could also communicate over distance, but you were still limited in terms of, of the, the speed. You're still limited to the speed of a horse. You had a lot more bandwidth than you had in the first age because now you can create these books that were fairly efficient in, um, in putting information together. Um, and a lot more publishers. During the, the, this, this age, uh, many people bought their own printing press. Uh, Benjamin Franklin and many non-government, non-church entities had their, their own printing press, so you had a lot more publishers. Obviously, it was still limited to people who were wealthy and educated, but um, it's important that you had a lot more publishers. And, of course, a book is very duplicatable. Once you have printed a book, you can print multiple copies of that book. And frankly, that's one of the reasons for the Age of Enlightenment is that now scientists were able to write, publish their books, and people were able to read the original. They didn't have to worry about uh, how things were changed in the duplication. But printing presses were still mostly government controlled, but as I said, there was some private control. 
And this, frankly, was what many people say created the Reformation, is now the church, uh, the, the Catholic Church at the time, was losing control of all these printing presses, and people were printing their own Bibles. And then the fourth information age I call the electronic age. Um, again, you can still communicate over time. Um, as I'm doing with this, I'm publishing, you know, I'm, I'm putting together this video, and you can watch it at some later time. But it's much more mobile now. I'm able to um, send this out at the speed of light. Very high bandwidth. Um, and I don't think it's as high as we're going to get, but we have a lot more bandwidth. We have a lot more information that we can um, present in any given amount of time. And here's an important point, and especially when we get to the role of government now, essentially you have a limited number of publishers. Um, I am a publisher. Everybody at the end of, of uh, the Internet can be a publisher. So now if the government or the community wants to control publishing, it's going to be much more difficult. And this is an important point that we'll hopefully get into later is that because it's digital as opposed to analog, which all the other information ages are all analog, because this information age um, was digital, you now can make perfect copies of things. Um, you can take a perfect copy of what you see here um, bit for bit. And so that's, that's important and, and it goes to some of the control in terms of we talk about copyright and a few other things um, that will come into play a little later in our discussion. Now. We've also changed in terms of who controls this technology. Um, it's mostly today under private control. There is still some government control, but it's mostly private. And see, and this now becomes where this class on net neutrality and the role of government is going to play in, in terms of, of how much more the government needs to play or how much less the government needs to play. Um, now, these four information ages, the, the, the cave painting, um, printing on, on parchment or paper, the printing press, and then the electronic age roughly corresponds to the four ages of man, the Stone Age, and I have pictures here of, of, of uh, Stonehenge and Machu Picchu, which were Stone Age uh, buildings. Then we have the Bronze Age, um, and then we had the Iron Age, and then finally the Electronic Age. So they roughly correspond to these four ages of man. Now let me talk about just the two elect technologies of the electronic age. We have wireless, um, which we have for personal, like ham radio operators or, or, or two-way radios. We have broadcast. Uh, we all know radio and television broadcast. And then we have commercial, like cellular um, and satellite technology. We also have wired technology. Um, we traditionally had circuit switched. Now we have packet switched. And these two technologies have certain limitations. In wireless, spectrum is scarce, um, and interference is a physical reality. And in wireline, physical space is limited. Um, standards are critical to, to electronics uh, transport. And so we're going to talk more about that as we move forward. I just want to give you a heads up on that. And finally, I'm going to give you sort of a picture on the history of telecommunications. Uh, this is somebody in their home. and. If they wanted to see a cave painting, they had to move to the cave painting. Um, the same with the age, the second age of, of pending and, and, and um, alphabet, of writing and alphabet. Um, you had to go to the church or the library to see the writing. Uh, the printing press allowed information now to be brought to the home. So before the first two ages were one way where you had to go to them, uh, the printing press allowed information to come to you, which was a, an important um, distinction. And then in the electronic age, we still had broadcast where information is coming to you. We had satellite and cable TV where information again is coming to you. And then finally, we have the internet where now it's two-way. So we see that, that, that as we move through the history of telecommunications, today is n unlike anything else in terms of communication, in terms of telecommunications. It's now two-way. It moves at the speed of light. You have uh, infinite number of publishers. It's, it's imminently, it's, it's easily duplicatable, and it's hard to know who has control. So thank you, and um, we'll go on to the next lecture after this. Hopefully this makes sense, and that if you have any comments, post it in the discussions.